What are you willing to live for? Or on the other hand, what are you willing to die for? When young people go through confirmation in the Lutheran Church, they are asked if they know, understand, and believe in the teachings of the Christian faith. The young people are then asked to make a commitment to Christ and His Church. They are asked this question. Do you intend to remain steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? That's a serious question for any Christian to answer. But discipleship to Christ is not just an intellectual exercise. Knowing what the Bible teaches is important, but Jesus doesn't say, go and make disciples by baptizing and teaching people to know what he said. Instead, in the Great Commission, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said this, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Please note that it doesn't just say, teaching them to know all that I have commanded you, but teaching them to observe and do it. Discipleship is not just answering questions correctly about the Bible. But following Christ is about faith, and following Christ is about commitment that involves a person's total life. Are you willing to live for Christ? Are you willing to die for Christ? Today we look at another of the 12 disciples of Jesus. His name is Simon, and to clearly distinguish him from Simon Peter, this Simon is always identified as Simon the Zealot. The Bible is silent on what eventually happens to most of the 12 apostles. However, many accounts outside the Bible indicate that, other than John, all the apostles likely died as martyrs for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Simon the Zealot would have been no exception. A martyr is a person who is killed because of their religious beliefs. There are many conflicting accounts, but perhaps the strongest tradition suggests that Simon the Zealot was ultimately sawn in half for being a Christian. So many Western works of art classically depict Simon the Zealot with a saw. The disciples of Jesus would be killed for following and proclaiming Christ as the Savior of the world from sin, death, and the devil. Why would the apostles give up their lives for the gospel? I believe for three reasons. First, because they had been witnesses about its absolute truth. Second, because God's love and the Lord Jesus' sacrifice had transformed them. And third, because the downpouring of the promised Holy Spirit had completely changed their values and passions and empowered them to live accordingly. Seldom would someone die for another person, but that's exactly what the apostles did. The disciples were willing to live for Jesus and they were willing to die for Jesus. Maybe this isn't too surprising. Jesus had given them the ultimate example by his own death by crucifixion. And Jesus' death was the epitome of love. Jesus was zealous for humanity and was willing to die to procure our salvation. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. That is zealous love. What an interesting and thought-provoking adjective connected to Simon's name. He's a zealot. But where does zeal come from? The need to protect something of value can create zeal. Zeal typically has a protective aspect to it. We just celebrated Veterans Day and acknowledged those who served their country in the armed forces. I would venture to guess that almost anyone who joins the military is a zealot for our nation. We usually call that national zeal patriotism. But fundamental to the military's purpose is to protect the nation. What sometimes gets lost in this kind of patriotic zeal to protect us is that it is motivated by love. Jesus had that kind of zealous, protective love, and his death on the cross shows and proves that love for us. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8 says this, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Too often we think of Jesus as timid and passive rather than a person of intense zeal. 
Nothing could be farther from the truth. Here is an example from Jesus' life that demonstrates his intense zeal. This comes from John chapter 2. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. Zeal for God's house consumed Jesus, and he immediately spoke of the extreme devotion he would make. Christ's zeal, his zealous love, would take him to the cross to die for you and for me. He would be killed by the religious leaders with Pontius Pilate's help. But his love would not be stopped by death. Death cannot stop true love. All it can do is delay it for a while, and in this case, only three days. Are we convicted by the gospel truth? Has God's grace and love transformed us? How has the Holy Spirit changed and empowered us? These are all questions worthy of our contemplation. May we also follow in the footsteps of the apostle to live for the sake of Christ. Zeal is behavior motivated by the jealous desire to protect yourself, your loved ones, and your property, anything you value and love, against violations. Jesus warns us not to be lukewarm in our love and devotion to him. Often Bronco fans are more excited and faithful to their team than many Christians are in their devotion to Christ. Sadly, those who are Republicans and Democrats show much more zeal for their candidates than we do for the king of all the nations. Simon the Zealot gives us an example of extreme devotion. The question is, are you zealous and what and whom are you totally committed to? Is Jesus your number one priority? Are you a fan or a fanatic? God is calling us not to be lukewarm fans of his son, but zealous fanatics for Jesus. How can you tell the temperature of your love, whether it's lukewarm or burning hot for the Savior? Show me how you spend your time and money, and I'll show you what really matters to you. What consumes your mental energy and focus? Can you go all day and never think about or talk to God? You might start the day with a prayer and maybe give thanks for an occasional meal, but is your life organized around your relationship with God? Distractions can be a big problem. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Since we are in Christ Jesus, we must also tear down our worldly zeal. Our zeal can be for things like Jesus mentioned, maybe zeal for food, drink, and clothes. Zeal for Christ's kingdom must be first in our lives. But we often struggle with all sorts of worldly zeal, a zeal for video games. A zeal for makeup and fashion, a zeal for higher education and status, a zeal for the newest gadgets and technology, a zeal for travel and pleasure, and sometimes, if we're honest, even a zeal for sin. Again, what are you zealous for? How you use your time, talents, and treasures can be illuminating. As you shine the light on your life, what does it reveal? What would be a reasonable jury of your peers' conclusion about your life if they knew your thoughts, words, and actions? What would they conclude you were zealous for? Consider the following that was said by Rudy Tidwell, a columnist for the Carroll County Times. He said this, A student studies his books diligently, burns the midnight oil studying, goes without eating properly, gets his degrees, and his name is included in the who's who's book, and he is called a genius. An athlete works out every day, 
follows the coach's instruction, disciplines his life rigidly, puts almost every waking moment into his sport, goes to the Olympics and wins the gold medal, and he's called a champion. An entertainment idol burns the candle at both ends, compromises moral standards in order to advance, uses people to get to the top of his profession, neglects his family, and ignores spiritual life, and he's called a star. However, he continues, A Christian can get his heart right with God, get excited about his salvation and his new relationship and life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, attend Bible study and worship, show joy in his life, weep over sin, read his Bible and pray, and do you know what some people call him? A crazy religious fanatic. Strange, isn't it? In Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 through 24, it says this, Whatever you do, work heartily, that is, from the heart, with all your zeal. So it says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Seek first Christ's kingdom. Live zealously for Jesus. And if need be, be willing to die for Christ.